just a disclaimer guys, I slaughtered this animal myself, I know how it was raised, I know the quality of all these foods and how they've been handled. That's why I am consuming these raw animal foods. I do not suggest you purchase raw animal foods unless it is from you know, a clean butcher and facility and even then please eat them at your own discretion. I do not advise doing this. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for six years. I know exactly what I'm doing. How cool does that look? Holy shit. So today we're going to taste every, pretty much every part of the animal. I don't think... I just, I just took some notes here just on the vitamin content of each of these foods so I can accurately tell you what it's high in, what it's a good source of. The only thing on the animal that we don't have here might be the sweetbreads, but I think everything else here is pretty much good to go. So these first two jars are blood and the fiber in the blood and blood is known for having it's very very high in B vitamins and iron and by very high what I'm talking about is several hundred percent of the RDA in a normal serving it has a decent amount of sodium chloride copper and zinc that's because it has a decent amount of sodium and chloride unlike most animal foods that's why a lot of people on the raw primal diet talk about using blood as a hydrating uh, food and the fibrin in the blood is where the, I'm, I'm honestly not sure, because uh, a lot of the data I looked at, guys, keep in mind, all of this data on these vitamins, I googled and went on that German database and I looked at a couple different versions of the food and kind of speculated on what the content was. So I don't know specifically if the blood includes the fibrin or what, but uh, I guess we could taste these two, right? So this blood is like a beautiful deep red, it's like filtered. Looks really, looks really cool. And these are all cold, so I guess I'm not too happy about that. But it has like a mild, minerally taste, and it tastes like the barnyard that the lamb was in. It has like a barnyardy, lamby taste to it. Not as, it's not as mild as it was two days ago. I forgot to mention that blood is an excellent source of vitamin D3. If the animal was in the sun and it was pretty much during the summer, I think it has to be. Uh, animals store vitamin D3 in various tissues, in the blood if it's plentiful, and in kidneys and other organs if it's not so plentiful. So, you know, if you don't have access, if you do have access to blood, you know, think of it as a little bit of a bonus. You're getting some vitamin D3. If not, then supplementing, getting some sun, eating certain fish organs is also an option. Now I'm going to try the, the fibrin, the coagulated part of the blood. Doesn't have much flavor. Kind of the same flavor as the uh, the blood, a bit more mild, and it has, you know, it's chewy. It's like chewing on jelly, almost. So in this jar, we actually have the lungs. Lungs have a good amount of vitamin C. They're an excellent source of vitamin C, actually. A decent amount of B vitamins, good amount of selenium and iron, and small amount of omega-3, because lungs have a small fat content. But, so, just to touch on, I guess I should touch on why would you drink blood, mainly for the hydration, the B vitamins, and the iron. For the lungs here, the main reason we would eat lungs is for a source of vitamin C and selenium mainly. Then you know, it has good amounts of iron, decent amounts of all the other minerals as well as a small amount of omega-3, so this would be the reason to eat lungs. And this is the lung here. It's very, uh, it's very spongy. I feel like when I squeeze it, I hear air bubbles popping. Very mild in flavor. Has that spongy texture, but firm. And this jar has a couple different things in it, I think. So this jar has the heart in it, the pancreas, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the spleen, and the kidneys. I guess I might as well do the order I took them out in. So first we have the heart. Do you guys want to see me like eat the whole heart in a video, like uh, Game of Thrones style? Let me know. But heart to me isn't really a good source of nutrients uh, in comparison to these other foods at least. Other than that, I mean it's excellent. It's a good B vitamins, riboflavin, and then it has decent amounts of iron, phosphorus, copper, selenium, zinc, and some vitamin C. So 
you know, B vitamins, riboflavin, like people eat so much meat in general, you don't really need to eat heart. Think of it as like, it's meat, but it has a bite to it. It's not chewy, but like when you bite into it, it like almost crunches. Uh, it's interesting. Here we have the spleen. Very deep red, ruby red color in the middle. I mean, and keep in mind guys, this is a very fresh animal and I have a bad sense of smell, so all these foods have a fairly mild flavor. This has a much stronger smell than the other foods though. It's like, uh, it's soft. It has a, a flavor I can't really describe, to be honest. A mix between, I mean, it's like an organy flavor, like mineral. I don't really know. Imagine like, this is gonna be a weird description. Imagine eating liver, but you don't taste minerals, bitterness, or any of the good flavors. Like, but spleen is good for B vitamins, excellent, probably one of the best sources of vitamin C, and it has good amounts of iron, selenium, decent amounts of phosphorus, potassium, zinc, copper, and small amounts of vitamin A. So the reason we would eat heart is really, you know, no reason to be honest. Uh, the reason we would eat spleen is primarily for vitamin C, iron, and selenium. It is incredible for all of those things, vitamin C, iron, and selenium, and then it has a decent amount of phosphorus, potassium, zinc, and copper, and small amounts of vitamin A. But a common thing with all these foods, guys, is they all have excellent amounts of B vitamins. They all have decent amounts of all the minerals. It's just some of these have exceptionally high amounts of some vitamins, and some of these have exceptionally high amounts of some minerals. Now, beef kidney, and I, you know, I knew beef kidney was a good source of nutrients, but not until recently did I realize how nutrient dense it was. So, beef kidney is high in B12, selenium, riboflavin, niacin, folate, selenium. It has moderate amounts of vitamin A, C, D, phosphorus, iron, zinc, copper, and a good amount of omega-3 because of the fat. So, kidney in general is full balanced fats. It's honestly, kidney is comparable to liver in regards to its nutrient content and it's a better source of selenium and folate than liver is and decent amounts of all the other vitamins too. So kidney is definitely uh, arguably ranked number two or three on the foods we're gonna eat today. And here, here's the kidney with the, you know, the fat on it. Did I tell you guys this was a lamb? I don't know where my train of thought is today. There's the inside of the kidneys. You know, they're just so strongly flavored that like me and a lot of people have an aversion to them. It, they honestly, like, if you guys have kidneys, it tastes like pee. Like some form of, what some mineral that's in urine or some substance that's in urine, that's what they pretty much taste like. But excellent source of uh, a lot of fat soluble vitamins and minerals. So here we have the brain. You know, here's, here's one half of the brain. Take out the other quarter, I got about a quarter of another part of it. Brain is a good source of vitamin C, vitamin E, B12, very high in choline and omega 3, and good sources of, also excellent sources of phosphorus, selenium, and has a good amount of copper, zinc, iron, and potassium. So, notably, the, the main reason we're eating brain is for its omega 3 content, but it's also worth noting, yeah, it has good amounts of vitamin C, vitamin E, selenium, phosphorus, copper, zinc, iron, potassium. It has it's an excellent and a very super nutrient dense food. Not to mention cholesterol and fat, which is not really present in a lot of other lean animal tissues. Very fatty, very rich. It's like eating egg yolk textured, uh, like firm custard with a light lamby flavor. Uh, but it's good. Uh, also worth mentioning, the brain has a slight, uh, a slight salinity to it. It has a, a slightly higher sodium content. Although I wouldn't consider it like a good source of sodium, it definitely has more than most animal foods. Uh, I ate the other one, but here you have one of the testicles of the animal. And you know, a lot of the, the you know, a lot of glandular therapy people believe if you eat a part of an animal, it will make you better in that way. So for testicles, I think you become more, you know, more. Uh, 
your, maybe your PP gets harder, I don't know, but the minerals that would explain that is that it's very, very high in zinc in comparison to its size. So you eat a small amount of this, it's very high in zinc. It has a good amount of all the other minerals, the B vitamins, and oh, by the way, uh, this, this te these testicles, we're kind of speculating on the vitamin content because there's no data I could find. We know for sure it's high in zinc, but we can only speculate that it has balanced amounts of all the other minerals and maybe a decent amount of fat soluble vitamins, but that it also has a small amount of omega-3 because there is some fat in them. So whatever truth to that there is, I don't know. So I'm just going to cut a piece off. You know, whatever this piece is. You know, I tell people it has the texture of scallop, but, you know, it definitely tastes like a, a goat's, uh, not a goat, it definitely tastes like a lamb's testicles that were banging around in a barnyard. It smells very, and you guys use the, a lot of people use the taste gamey. This is not gamey. This is like you took uh, a handful of lamb shit and hay and rubbed it on your arm and then licked it. That's kind of what it tastes like. Uh, not as bad as I illustrated, but... Um, so yeah, main reason we need the testicles is mainly for the zinc content uh, because we can only really speculate on the other stuff. Liver, the holy grail of animal nutrition. And up until I was reading that info about the kidneys, I really prized liver as one of the only organs you should eat and as well as brain. Like I used to always say, hey, get some liver and brain if you have to choose two organs. But, you know, kidney really comes close to liver in a lot of the vitamins because liver as with all these other foods, is an incredible source of B12 and folate. It has an incredible amount of vitamin A, good vitamin C, E, K, uh, good riboflavin. Liver has a very, very high amount of copper, good phosphorus, good selenium, and good iron. The main comparison here between liver and kidney is that liver has way more vitamin A, 100%. Uh, kidney might edge it out in selenium, but liver has more copper, and then they're both an excellent source of vitamin C and vitamin K, although we know liver has a good vitamin K, I don't really, I couldn't see data on the vitamin K content in kidney. So really the only thing we can speculate is that kidney might have a slightly higher amount of omega-3 and liver has more vitamin A and copper and then selenium has, uh, kidney has more selenium. So uh, both excellent sources of nutrition and should both be incorporated into your diet. Piece of liver. It's definitely stronger in flavor than it was a couple days ago. It's still mild, has a slight lamby flavor to it. Not really too sweet or too minerally or bitter. Uh, you know, sometimes livers can kind of have uh, one of those leaning towards negative or positive flavors. But yeah, I mean, the reason we mainly eat liver is the same reason as kidneys, except liver just has an incredible amount of vitamin A, great for clearing up your skin. So this video is way too long, but what are you going to do? I could have, I was honestly thinking about isolating all of these foods individually and talking them about them one by one in a video, but we did what? One, two, we did like seven, we did eight or, uh, we did actually, did, I think, nine foods in the span of 17 minutes. So would I rather make nine two-minute videos? I got way too much content to come out for you guys, so I don't really want to do that. I have too many other videos I want to make as well, so thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to support me, please, uh, you know, hey, just share the video, share the channel. Uh, there's Patreon, PayPal as well if you'd like to help me support me and my goals. There's a great video on the Patreon about me if you haven't watched that. I um, almost had a stroke earlier looking up studies with vegan gains. That was not fun. That was ridiculous. Complete waste of my time. Um, but let me know if there's any video topics you guys would really like to see. Is there something on my face? Uh, you know, any, any topics you guys would like to see. I'm really just trying to prioritize what videos I'm going to make next.